five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and it goes from now until midnight. And uh, as you know, we always like to have a guest here uh, on uh, once a week that we just love to talk to. Ladies and gentlemen, out to San Francisco, California, from a very cheap apartment that he rents. He's been renting for what? How many years now? Uh, 34 yeah, 34 years. It's Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> How's it going, Alex? Uh, I heard uh, huh? you yeah. got a visit to the dentist. Yeah, a little little visit to the dentist. I, uh, uh, Always a horror story. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's not that it's a horror story. You know, I I years ago quit having fears about dentistry, you know, uh, because I started to see them so much that you kind of get used to it. And um, so I, I have always had kind of a, a positive approach towards it, you know. In fact, when I was doing, remember I was doing the radio show and then I was also doing a TV show uh, special. And I was so exhausted from going back and forth between them that when I had a dental appointment, I looked forward to it because they'd give me the gas and I'd have at least an hour where nobody could, <laughs> you know, impinge on my life. So I learned to almost relax in the chair. But, uh, uh, you know, nobody likes to have a tooth pulled. Uh, that, you know, and, and actually, you know, from a, from, a, from a technical standpoint, I'd have to have a dentist here to uh, agree with what I'm saying. What I've always heard is that having a tooth pulled is less uh, traumatic to you and to your mouth and to your whatever than uh, having your teeth drilled. Wow. In fact, they use less Novocaine. That's what I'm told. Now, I don't, okay. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Don't take it to a, the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you can take it to the bank of Bennett and leave it there if you want to. Uh, but anyway, so... Um, uh, you know, having a tooth pulled, though, just the idea of it, they're going to yank this thing out of your mouth that, well, you've had, I've had this for, oh, God, if I'm 79 now, maybe I've had this tooth since I was, um, uh, you know, 10 years old, 69. So this tooth has been in my mouth for years and years and years, and now this old friend is leaving me, being pulled out by a total stranger. <laughs> they couldn't save it? No, uh, well, it's just that it was tooth in which the gum had kind of receded from the tooth, and you could see the root, uh, and uh, it's been that way for 20 years. They told me 20 years ago, that tooth's going to have to go. Well, I mean, that was 20 years ago, maybe 25. I mean, this goes back to when I was still working at Live 105 that a dentist told me this. Oh, that, that tooth's got to go. Try and keep that area clean in there because it could get infected, and that's the thing you got to be worried about. Well, it wasn't until now that it got suitably infected that they said, you know, it's going to give you more trouble than it's worth. You know, we can keep giving you antibiotics, but you don't want to do that. So uh, um, I, he said, uh, I'd pull it if I were you. And this is the guy who was going to do the pulling. Uh, he was not my, my dentist. Uh, and uh, so I let him, you know, I let him take it. And now I've got this big gap in my mouth. Which yeah. will be filled in with a what they call a clipper, which is a little clip-on tooth that you put in there, and it fills up the space, prevents the teeth from growing together, getting closer together. I never heard of that. We, yeah, well, once you have a tooth pulled, your other teeth have a tendency to move closer together. So what you want to do is keep them separated in case maybe you want an implant or something like that. Plus, I've used these clip clippers before. And they're, can I be honest, they're, they're okay. They're really terrific. I had an, a, couple, a couple of other teeth pulled in which uh, I had to get clippers uh, before they did the uh, implant. And uh, I, I enjoyed it so much that when it came time to put in the implant, I almost didn't want them to. I was enjoying 
you know, uh, using this thing every day. I found it very convenient and, you know, it didn't bother me at all. After a while, you get used to it kind of like it's another tooth, except at night you take it out. So. Oh, well, so. Uh, my dentist just retired in the middle of uh, very abruptly, so I have to find a new one. It's, uh, I don't know how you do that because it's, you want to find somebody you're comfortable with. And well, you know, you don't like to change dentists because you're used to your dentist. Yeah. But my dentist, quite frankly, I've lost all trust in. <laughs> uh, a good example that I was giving last night was is that my dentist said, well, you know, you've got to get that tooth pulled. You've got to get it pulled now because you're, you're infected, right? You've got an infection. Here, here's some penicillin. Take it for the next 10 days. But we've got to get it done immediately. So they set me up with a doctor and... I said to her, how much, you know, to my old dentist, how much will this cost? She says, well, I would charge 650 to pull it, but you're going to an oral surgeon and they'll probably charge double. Wow. What do you think the charge for pulling the tooth? Not the gas. The gas was $165, but pulling the tooth, how much do you think he charged me? Well, I would, I would think 500 would be fair, but... Uh, yeah, well, 500 was exactly what he charged me, and she told me it was going to be double 650. Yeah. Well, she was charging more than an oral surgeon. So how do you trust that? Yeah, exactly. That's all then right. then uh, I decided I needed a clipper, so I called her and uh, I said, uh, the, the office over there, and I said, I need to have the clipper put in. And they called me back and they said, okay, we'll have you in here on uh, Tuesday to, for a fitting. Uh, and um, I went, okay. And, I, and they said, that will be 875 So I said, okay, I'll be there. So then I, I called my wife, who's got a new dentist she's been seeing. She used to see this dentist. That's how I started seeing the dentist. She went and got herself a newer dentist. And I said, why don't you call upstairs to your new dentist, because it's upstairs from her office, and find out how much uh, it's going to cost me to get a, um, a, a clipper for this thing, a clip-on. I was calling it a fake tooth, whatever. And uh, I, so I, she got the people on the phone, and I talked to them. And they said, oh, uh, that will cost you, um, what did she say, uh, I think $500. And your insurance will cover fifty percent of it. So all you'll all all you'll really wind up paying is about two fifty. Mm -hmm. Well, it, that's a big difference from eight seventy five. Yeah. And I don't see that her clip on is going to be any better than the one that my uh, you know that my dentist was doing. And if my dentist is perhaps going to somebody who is very special at making these things, well, then think think less than that for your for your clients and try and get them the best deal on, on things like that, you know, but she was just upcharging us on everything. Um, better bail on that. Well, I think we, we did, but the, the hard thing is bailing on a dentist you've gone to for what the last 10 years, mm -hmm. Beca just because like you said, your dentist is going out of business. He's quitting the, the job and now you've got to find a new dentist that, a dentist is something you you always rely on. You know, you know them. You know you can call them. They know you. You got an emergency. They're there for you, and so on. And so you're afraid to leave the comfort of that to go to somebody else who you don't know, who yeah, might exactly. who might actually be better, cheaper, uh, and whatever. I mean, I never got a real break in in dentistry with this uh, with my current uh, uh, dentist. You know, she'd charge me top dollar for everything. And I'd go, you know, maybe this is just what it costs now. But no, it's not what it costs now. If this oral surgeon is pulling out my tooth for 500 he's a fucking oral surgeon. He could charge more, but he yeah. doesn't. So he knows what the going rate is for that. The part that got me, though, was the gas. Gas was a bargain. <laughs> uh, no, 165 bucks for the gas. I mean, come on. I, I said to them, I said, you know, could I just like, um, oh, I don't know, ne next time we do this, could I just bring about uh, half a dozen cans of uh, Ready Whip? 
<laughs> you know, because it has nitrous oxide as a propellant, and you simply breathe it in, and it will get you high like nitrous oxide. I said, it's only fucking air. I've, I've known, I knew a guy who would buy a, a bottle of this stuff, big, big, giant, you know, metal bottle of it, uh, and take it to parties and get people high. It was in a big blue bottle. We always knew the nitrous oxide bottle because it was blue. And, uh, you know, I mean, he would just get everybody high. I think he bought one of these big, this was years ago, but bought one of these big giant nitrous oxide things for like, you know, rented them out for, I don't know, 10 bucks, 15 bucks. That's why he took them around to parties. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm getting charged 165 for nitrous oxide. And they said, well, because it takes a specialist to, uh, to mix it. I said, you mean the woman sitting next to me who's, when I say, give me more, they lower the oxygen level? You know. <laughs> so I, uh, that, that one got me, the price on that. That was the expensive part. The, the tube being pulled seemed to be rather reasonable, you know. And then I, I've had no pain. Absolutely. I'm suspicious that the tooth was really pulled because it doesn't feel like anything went on there. Um, just that there's a big gap now. So I, I got through it okay, you know. So. Well, the uh, dentist is, it's an odd job. They, uh, I mean, they get a, they make a lot of money, but being in someone's mouth all day would sound disgusting to me. It's supposedly a very high suicide rate among dentists. They always said it had a higher suicide rate, yeah. Yeah. Um, here's what I was thinking. There's, you know, where I went was a, was a practice in which this guy and another guy, and maybe they have some other people that work with them, uh, all were setting up, uh, you know, were going from room to room removing teeth. Uh, and um, the, I, I, when I walked down the hall, I could, there were at least eight, if not ten, different rooms for patients to sit in, you know, with the chair and the, everything like that. And I couldn't help but think this guy goes from room to room to room to room all day mm -hmm. long, pulling this tooth, pulling that tooth, pulling another tooth. No wonder they commit suicide. I would go nuts if I had to do that <laughs> as my job, pulling teeth all day. Well, I, I try to keep this network alive. That's like pulling teeth. But the fact is that, you know, what a boring fucking job that is. Yeah. In fact, I had one dentist say to me, yeah, the reason there's such a high suicide rate is basically this is carpentry. It, yeah, it's a high-paid factory job. He, he said, you know, he said there's nothing new. I mean, you got to fill a tooth, you do it this way. You got to pull a tooth, you do it that way. You know, it's not like, you know, a doctor, a surgeon, for instance, has to be a, has to be a sleuth. Has to figure, they have to, doctors have to figure out what's wrong with you. Uh, and um, uh, dentists don't. Dentists know what's wrong with you. Ow, my hurt, tooth hurts. Oh, yeah, uh, it's uh, you've got an infected tooth there. You've got a cavity there or whatever. And then what do they do? It's just carpentry. Chisel, 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 tap, 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 bum, <laughs> bum, bum, next, you know. So, I mean, it's really, it's repetitious work. Yeah. And I don't know why anybody goes into that. No, I, Me I, either. It's a, uh, yeah, yeah, you got to go. It's just like a, you're a doctor, so you got to go through years of medical school. And yeah. So I mean, it's it's a, it's a uh, it's quite a deal, and uh, I'm I'm always amazed that uh, that these guys don't commit suicide more often. <laughs> you know that I haven't known one that's committed suicide. Uh, the only positive part of it is the money. And these guys make better money, I think, than regular doctors now because regular doctors are getting paid so badly by not only Medicare but by the uh, uh, insurance companies that a lot of them have to, like, get together in groups and they have to go to work for HMOs or whatever, whereas you don't hear dentists doing that. All dentists are, you know, raking in the bucks because yeah. it, there's very little insurance. I have... Uh, Delta Dental, and that takes care of up to $2,500 a year, which is really good because usually most dental plans are only $1,500. So I, I, they cover a lot. I can get a lot of work done for that. Yeah, most dental plans are the worst. The, yeah, well, they, 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 they think it's dental assistance or something like that, you know. 
But so I, uh, you know, and I haven't used up that much of mine so far. But you know, uh, I'm 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 going to have a lot of dental work done this year. But you see, I don't want to have too much dental work done, okay? Because I'm depressive like you. Mm-hmm. I just would hate to go and have another implant put in my mouth, and the day after they finish the implant, I drop dead. <laughs> You know, I mean, it's it's five all, it's five all about th- timing. <laughs> yeah, five thousand bucks, and I'm then I'm I'm dead. And what's go what's buried with me? This implant that after the rest of me decays will still be lying there in the coffin. <laughs> you know, so um, we think alike. <laughs> did you did you ever, did you ever hear the story on how implants were invented? You know, who invented the implants? No, it's. Uh, I think it was today. like the Samoans. Uh, some South Sea tribes. What they did was when somebody lost a tooth, they would take some wood or whatever and pound it into their jaw. <laughs> and then they would put a fake tooth on it. That was the birth of the implant. They were doing these centuries ago. Wow. Yeah. Of course, you know, but they didn't charge $5,000. Is that what it is now? Five. Oh, I'd yeah. say, first of all, if you're going to get an implant, Folks, I'll tell you this. This is really good. Uh, if you get an implant first, they got to pull the tooth. That's five hundred bucks, okay? Although I had another doctor pull a tooth and charge me seven hundred, nine hundred. Uh, but let's say five hundred dollars for that, okay? That's for starters. Now you go to the implant. If you're lucky, you'll get somebody who will do an implant for twenty five hundred dollars. Now we're up to three thousand. Now you got to add to that the the uh, they before they put in the implant they have to take a CT scan in order to make sure your your jaw your you know your sinuses can take it you know and that they can they won't drill past a certain point in your sinuses to put it in because you don't want to puncture into the sinus so you get a CT scan that's another three hundred dollars and now we're up to thirty three hundred dollars okay then your dentist has to make the uh, the uh, clipper which is considered important because the clipper uh, keeps the teeth separated while your mouth is healing. And it takes about three months for your mouth to heal before they can put the implant in. And then when they put the implant in, you got to have another three months before they will then finalize it and uh, put the, you know, make it available for the tooth. So that, that, that's another, uh, let's say another 500. So now we're up to $3,800, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, after you're through with all of that, you got to have the tooth made to put on the on the implant, and that last time I did it cost me almost two thousand dollars. <laughs> what are we up to now? We're up to like fifty eight hundred dollars. Fifty eight. And that's but I think my dentist probably charged me too much for the for the crown, but that you know so it's not cheap, and that's for one fucking tooth. Yeah, that's. Uh... I couldn't do that. Yeah. So, I mean, who who wants this? So I'm going to pay I'm going to pay out that kind of money to get a tooth fixed at 79 years of age. Okay. You know, what are my options? I can have a tooth missing and look like a Trump voter, you know. <laughs> or a Walmart shopper. A Walmart shopper. Yeah, that's another good thing you kind of look like. Um uh, so, you know, I mean, I, uh, and a lot of people I know who lose their tooth at my age, just unless it's in the front, in which case you got to do something about that. Uh, but uh, this is in the back. You can't see it when I open my mouth. My, my business manager, Gary, lost the same tooth. He didn't ever got it replaced. He said he got used to the gap there. Uh, my father lost the same tooth. That tooth it seems to go. It's the second tooth in. Well, it's the third tooth in if you've still got wisdom teeth. Second tooth in if, you're, if you don't. Um, and uh, my father lost that tooth. And a lot of people I know, that's the tooth they lose. And they don't do anything about it because nobody's going to see it. You know, and I'm, I'm giving it the extra expense because I want to get the clip on. You know, so uh, that's so that's my dental story. Once again, folks, you heard it last night. You can hear it again tonight. Fuck you. <laughs> it's the only excitement in my life. What did you do that was exciting lately? Well, I had a tooth pulled. Remember when it used to be I got laid? So. Yeah, those days are gone. 
Yeah, those days are gone. So, you know, what the hell? Um, but uh, so what's new in the life of Larry Bubbles? Oh, by the way, yesterday I was talking to a girlfriend and she said, how did he get that? Why is he using the name Bubbles? And uh, I uh, was trying to remember the comedian who named you Bubbles. Paula Poundstone. Paula Poundstone, that's mm-hmm. it. And uh, th- th- is she just, what, that was because of your ebullient personality? No, I was trying to get her uh I was trying to get her to go to a hot tub after an open mic, and she she thought that was so hysterical. Oh, she started calling me Bubbles. Oh, I see. After this, after the hot tub. Yeah, there was this hot tub on Van Ness, and people used to go there. I, I, I can't believe I did. It's, it's so disgusting with the germs. Now I think about it, but and it's, I think it's still there. And, well, yeah. So uh, after this open mic, I said, "We should go to a hot tub. Let's go to a hot tub." And she, bubbles, bubbles. So she started calling me Bubbles. And I see. Talking. But it, I often thought it was because your your personality was so. I think that's why it stuck. Effusive. Yeah, I'm so unbubbly. So. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. but it stuck. And so, it, did she tell? Did she start calling you that when other people were around? Yeah, yeah. That's why because everyone started laughing when she was calling me bubbles, and uh, and there you have it. And so you then started calling yourself Bubbles and said, I'll go along. I kind of didn't like it, but it kind of, no, I didn't, but people started calling me that and it just kind of stuck. And Yeah, yeah. It, it stuck and you're stuck with it now. And every time I'd go on the road, I'd go to, back in the 80s, uh, I'd arrive at the airport and uh, they were shocked. For some reason, they thought I'd be black because I don't know why, but the name Bubbles, we thought you'd be black. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea why they would think that. But. Well, there was a tap dance team known as Buck and Bubbles in vaudeville. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's that's where they got it from. Plus, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. I mean, Larry Brown is a real black name. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, because, uh, and you've had that name ever since. I mean, you, you in fact, have Yeah, it was my second year of stand-up, so. You've adopted it so much that you literally bill yourself as Larry Bubbles Brown. Yeah, I can't. Uh, when I did the last Letterman, they said Letterman never does nicknames, but Eddie Brill talked him into doing it when he introduced me. So, well, the, kinda, that's your that's your stage name. Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, so, yeah, and I call you Bubbles or Bubs. Yeah. You know, but I kind of like Bob. You know, it's a, isn't that wasn't that the name of? Uh, <laughs> It was like on my three sons, uh, William Frawley. Yeah. Was it Uncle Bub? Yeah, I, I'm wondering what my what my middle name should be like that. Uh, Slow Boyle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we never had a nickname for you. No, except I, some people call me they were they called me that asshole, uh, but uh, <laughs> I assume that was just lovingly said. Uh, you're beloved. Yes, because I'm so beloved. Um, so, uh, have you been working lately? Any interesting gigs? I've been working. I did a gig in Oakland last night, and I didn't get shot, so that was good. And I mean, have you been opening for anybody interesting? Because you're nobody always... in. No, that's. Uh, I got to get some of those good gigs going again. You, I was. You're an opening act, right? Base or middle act. Uh, I'm a middle act, which is very comfortable for me, although I do open for like people like Tarvey and Schneider. And well, you're the middle act because they're the main act, and there's no, there's really no middle act. There's an right, opening yeah. act, and then there's Carvey or you know, mm-hmm. whoever. Um, and and Rob wanted to take me to Australia, and I had to turn that down when I found out it was a 15-hour flight. So I just why, why, why would you? T- well, because you, you, you know, what? I, I, well, I'd love to go there too. So. No, what you told me was, though, you used to fly gliders. Yeah, yeah. And yet you won't get on a fucking airplane. I don't well, understand that. This is, this is that. not a fear of flying. This is just being trapped for 15 hours. That's just... You know something? It, it, do you take drugs at all? Well, you, you would need something to knock you out for... That's like a full day. I've gone to China. That's a 22-hour flight, something like that. But I'll yeah, tell you're pretty you, good about that. I could never do well, that. Well, I'll begin with, I bring along some Xanax. That puts me to sleep. So there, there's eight hours right there. Okay. And then, you know, they, they keep you occupied. Dinner and lunch and, you know, snacks and movies and things like that. And uh, once you get there, it's it, it really, 
it didn't it I knew it was going to be a long flight and I figured it was going to be arduous but it wasn't so you know it was it was okay it was terrific so next time he tells you you should just try the experience once to see if you can do it you know well I'd love to go there it sounds like an interesting place yeah and uh, uh, how's Rob doing is he fine Rob's like the hardest working man in show business. I'm supposed to be in Vegas with him next month, and he uh, he just he just got back from I think Japan. He entertaining the troops. He never stops, and he's doing that show on Netflix, and he's doing stand up all over the country. So I don't know how he does it. Is he doing more of that Netflix show, or is that it? I think they're doing another season. Yeah. Are they really good for him? I like that show. I liked it a lot. Yeah, like he told me, he said the first the first season, the first couple of episodes sucked, and then it gets better, and he's right. And yeah. it's, it's not bad, right? Right. It's a terrific show. Anyway, yeah. got to go, but uh, right. let's uh, get together next week, okay? Will do. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that was Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks, Bubs, for joining us this evening. Uh, nice of you to be part of our little get-together. Uh, let me see here. I'm t- trying to figure out uh, where my level should be here. There we go. There it is. It's fine. Anyway, because I'm doing everything here. You know, I switch the show, and I do uh, the whole thing, and uh, I'm looking now to make sure my hands aren't... Uh, going to get uh, uh, out of sync, because I'm probably going to go out of sync. Let me warn you about that. The reason is I'm using a new machine, and this, uh, my old machine, and my old machine doesn't have the same power, so the more stuff I run in here, uh, the more it, uh, it, it, it tends to put me out of sync. So uh, when people start calling, the more people we add, the more they're I go out of sync, okay? I got a lot of stuff going right now, and, uh, of course, I'm, I'm slowly going out of sync, all right? So uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, but I'm going to try and slow down the, uh, the use of my, of my machine here. But anyway, we've got the lines open, and at last night, we, the last couple of nights, we had a problem with an echo. And after the show last night, I figured out what it was. And I'm not going to explain it to you because it's a whole technical thing that if I explain, it's just boring to explain. But we should not have the echo tonight. So, But I found it, and that was a, that was a good thing. Let me see here. Uh, we have the uh, – we have – I've got I to gotta open that. Let me see here. Are you, are you there, Charlie? You there, Charlie? 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 I'm trying. Yeah, you got to turn your camera on. I can't see you. Uh, there we go. There's his camera. All right. So uh, now if I just uh, uh, put him, uh, give him a little uh, uh, square, uh, somehow I'm getting some slap back. Hold on. Let me just turn the audio down a second. Okay. There we are. And here comes, uh, wait a minute, while we've got the chance, we may as well add... Uh, uh, let me see here. We may as well add uh, Phil to the mix. Um, let me go here and take Phil and put him there. And there we go. And uh, now I you do a little transition. And uh, there they both are. Okay. Hey, how you doing? I'm okay. I, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go out of sync. The more people that call, the more I'm going to go out of sync because they still have my machine down at Apple. He said, well, we were, shower we, instead of we, the sink. We we're trying to get a part, and the part just came in today, so it'll be ready by Saturday at the yeah. very latest. Yeah, well, it, it, huh? It pisses me off. It the fucking is- pisses me off, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I, uh, that's what you, I don't know. Because it's, it, because I really find it somewhat hard or difficult to do this show uh, with just um, uh, the, um, to do the show like it is. Here we go. Where is? Wait a minute. Think, I, think about I, this. I, I don't. How lucky you oh, are. I have to add. I have to add Jeff. That's what my problem is. Uh, uh, you're lucky that you yeah. could put parts in your computer. If you had one of those other those Mac uh, all in ones. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, how would you put anything in it? Oh, uh, I, if it went, well, it would be done. That's a good point. Uh, let me see. Cancel. Let me. Uh, oh, I oh, always having trouble finding. You see, like it was this number. Come on, folks. Let me. Are we there? 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 There we go. Stein. And there we get him in there. Uh, we put his picture in there. We add him. And there's uh, our early panel, folks. Our early panel. Hi there, uh, Jeff. How are you? Yeah, how are you doing? It was his spot uh, that was causing the echo last night. Really? <laughs> Not, no, the spot that he's in now. I think uh, 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 Patrick was in that square last night, and that was what was causing the problem because that number three doesn't come up as a volume uh, switch, and uh, for some reason it just doesn't show up here, so I had to go into the system and turn number three down. So uh -huh. now we should be okay. In fact, let me... Let me just check and make sure that everything is the way it should be. One, two, three, zero, zero, zero. Good. Okay, we're fine. I'll be glad when I get my old mach my old machine back, or my mm. new machine, which is the old machine, because well, I went back and looked at the videos from that, and I didn't go out of out of uh, out of uh, sync. Now maybe I won't go out of sync tonight. I'm using a slightly different algorithm to make the backup video, but well, show off this this missing tooth. Can, uh, no, I don't want to. Back. No, okay. Well, you know, it, uh, it's odd that it makes you sound like Lou Ferrigno. I see. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, today I found that I was eating, and all of a sudden I was chewing on that side. Of course. You it's know, a ghost chew. You well, know. Yeah, but I mean, I had no problem with it, so I, I'm, I'm happy with the way it is. You know, it's going to be you know, good. It's it's similar to Charlie. He lost a couple of toes. Do you still yeah. feel those toes? Do you have like um, yeah, uh, yeah. A, a ghost I get toes no or cramps and no, no toes there. Really? <laughs> yeah. How do you get rid of cramps in toes where you don't have toes? <laughs> you just have. Once I reach down and touch my foot, I realize there's no toe and it stops cramping. Yeah, because uh, they, I, I memory or something. Uh, yeah. t talk about. You know, country medicine. Let me talk about country medicine for a second. When I lived in Texas, I was working at uh, KILT in Houston. And there was a guy by the name of, uh, I think his name was Steve Lundy. And uh, he lived up, uh, lived up. I think he lived up near Plano or somewhere like that. And he used to go up on the weekends to go uh, from Houston to there to go see his family. And on one trip there, he had a terrible accident and he lost his leg. Ooh. So, you know, he always wondered what the fuck happened to my leg. So he went back to the hospital and said, what did you do with my leg? He said, well, what we do when you lose a leg is we take the leg and for a month we put it in formaldehyde and then we bury it. Really? And he said, why do you do that? And he said, to prevent phantom pains. Now, if you have never, that is pure folk <laughs> medicine if I ever heard it, you know? Yeah. Just right. absolutely pure folk medicine. So do Thank you have uh, phantom my toes? Do do yeah. I have do I have phantom pains? Yeah, from the missing. Tooth. No, no, I feel a big gap there, and uh, I, as I told uh, to bubbles, I'm getting what they call a uh, uh, a clipper. That's what the right. lady at the at the at the new dentist's office because I, I I got two three hundred dollars less from some other. Dentist, and she's a good yeah. one. She's not. She's well, not going to give me a wooden tooth or be something. Be careful. Yeah. This one's going to clip you. No, the other one was clipping me. She well, she's she, giving you a clipper. She, she was going to charge me eight seventy five for the goddamn yeah. thing, and this one's charging me five hundred. Yeah. So fuck you. You know, well, I'm just. You know, remember, uh, Bree uh, got some discount dentistry done. Yeah. Uh, in uh, Dubai. Yeah. And he, he wasn't well, very this, happy. This isn't a discount dentist. In fact, this dentist <laughs> is Marjorie's current dentist, who mm -hmm. she dumped the old one for, the one that I'm still going to. And I said to mm -hmm. her, you know, you left me with this dentist, okay? Well, that's why your price was higher, because Marjorie stopped using her. She had to make up for the loss. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't. You know, the thing is that uh, uh, just something wrong about the whole thing, you know, that, that yeah. I get stuck with this dentist. And you get stuck with a dentist because you don't like to change dentists, you know? Once you get a yeah. dentist, even if they're the worst dentist in the world, even if they give you great pain and whatever, it just, you know, you don't want to 
have anything to do with it. So anyway, yeah, uh, uh, you know, that's so that that's my story. And I'm I have a great dentist, it. but he's getting on in years, and he's going to retire, and I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, is he is he painless? Is he uh, painless? Absolutely about, uh, painless. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, you know, I most most dentistry. Most, if a uh, truth be known, most dentistry <laughs> is painless. Except for the Novocaine, the minute they give you the Novocaine. But once they do that, it's, there's no pain. This, this guy, uh, when he injects the Novocaine, I used to want gas prior to the Novocaine or use a topical of lidocaine before you stuck the needle in. This guy's so good, I don't need anything. This guy didn't, yeah. you know, this guy didn't, use, didn't use lidocaine on me? Yeah. I, I, now that you mention it, usually they put the stick in your mouth and let yeah. it. They didn't, he didn't do that. And it really didn't hurt that much. And That's although why you he then had, bucks. he had to go in under here yeah. on the other side, yeah. and that he's there, this is only going to take three seconds. And that, that was that was kind of a, a win, wince it. one, yeah. 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 But you know, basically, once they got the novocaine in you and you got the gas, forget it. Yeah. They could pull out every tooth in your mouth, and you wouldn't get <laughs> a shit yeah, until you go home. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as long as you get me high, you can do anything you want to me. Do you hear that, gals out there? Listen. To me. <laughs> uh, catch me while I still have a prostate, okay? <laughs> yeah, yes. I don't think at your age that they're going to take it out. Uh, I don't think so either. You know, what they do is they give you hormones, and uh, uh, they say that it actually makes whatever little cancer you've got there go backward. In other words, your PSA... Yeah. Uh, numbers don't they give go, you estrogen? Go down. I don't know. I don't think it's estrogen. I, I just think it's uh, it's something to cut down on, on your male hormone. It, it's the testosterone that causes yeah. the, uh, the you know, whatever's going on. So I would imagine they give uh, you they, estrogen. They don't give you, I don't think they give you estrogen. They give you something to inhibit the testosterone. And well, I, maybe you, you'll get tits if they give you the estrogen. I already have tits. So I don't, <laughs> I don't I need them. I grew them. I got them when I gained weight. You know, yeah. So. And they never went away. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, well, no, they, they, they're less than they were, you know. Yeah. But, you know, they used to be fun. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so. Uh, let me see. Is anybody saying that there's any echo tonight? No. Oh, oh I said it. No. I said it. Hold on a second. Okay. Oh, she, she, she didn't hear me. She didn't uh -huh. hear me. Why is it a female? not talking to you Why can't anymore? you choose a male voice if you want it? You know, in my car you can <laughs> with a GPS. Yeah, you, you, I, you know maybe you could choose a you, different. You know, voice. for GPS, you should be able to get like movie stars who voice. Then they'd them. have to pay more money. Like you know, like Patrick Stewart could go turn left here, make it so. You know, <laughs> things like that. You know, but they never thought of that. You know, you yeah. Know. I wanted an irreverent one. Hey, moron, you missed a turn. Well, you yeah. know, on your phone, on your. You can have Siri be a guy. You can have Siri yeah. be a woman. You can have yeah. Siri be British. You can have Siri be, you know, Australian. Australian, Australian I, think. I think there's one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just never. I never use Siri. Siri sucks. Siri yeah. is, is somehow the people over at Amazon with. Well, I can say that name. Uh, um, the uh, well, no, it's called Echo actually. Um, it, it really uh, did a good job because it gets most of what I say. You know, mm. uh, unlike I, me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can ask it interesting questions like, um, "Echo, what was the first movie James Stewart ever made?" The world's earliest surviving motion picture film showing actual consecutive action is called Groundhog Garden Scene. Hey, well, hey. I get. <laughs> I didn't ask her that. I asked her James who was the first film by James Stewart. So your echo is broken. I, yeah, well, wait a minute. Echo? Who's, <coughs> who's Alex Bennett? Bennett Gordon Schwartzman, better known by his on-air name, Alex Bennett, is an American talk radio host known for his mix of left-wing politics and humor. Oh, you see? Okay. Is that cool? Yeah. Impressive. Oh, the other the other reason I want to get my old machine back. This yeah. one sounds like a thresher. Yeah. If you listen, you can hear it. You hear it? Yeah. Yeah. The That's other not one. Your fan? The other one's just silent. You know. Yeah. So anyway, what the hell? Um, 
So uh, uh, I, I, we, I got into an argument tonight with girlfriend, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's one that's not going to easily resolve itself. Uh, but I decided... Just apologize. I decided I wanted to get rid of Netflix. Really? Well, because they're going up two more dollars, and I think that's getting a bit greedy, and so I, don't think, I don't think we should let them get away with it. Well, then stop, the, you know, get the commercials, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll go down. No, Netflix. Oh, Netflix has no commercials. Yeah, it's I mean, Hulu Hulu's then. still charging me eleven ninety nine to get no commercials. Yeah. You know? And I just, you know, I, am I... I could live without Hulu, but I don't think I could live without Netflix. I couldn't live without Hulu because I like watching TV shows without commercials, and they have the whole Fox schedule on there, and they have the whole NBC schedule. Mm -hmm. They'll be losing probably the ABC schedule once uh, uh, Disney starts up their, their little yeah. thing. In fact, they're one of the people who's backs Hulu, and they're getting out of Hulu. Oh. But... I don't know. I just feel like saying "fuck you." I, I'm not going to pay that kind of money. But and I told girlfriend, I'm going to I'm going to stop because I pay for it every month. I pay for that. I pay for Hulu, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, do, uh, uh, Jeff, do you do you watch Netflix? No, not anymore. I stopped. Why? I don't know. For a while, it just got boring. You know what it is? Or repetitive. Yeah. And and I I just turned it off. There's too much on there. It's like they yeah. top load it with too much stuff. Well, they recommend stuff, so I just watch the recommended stuff. And <laughs> uh, you know, uh, between who uh, between Netflix and Amazon Prime, uh, I'm kind of happy. You know, uh, I have a few other things, but uh, I, even the Roku thing uh, sometimes. Well, you see, I buy, movie. I pay, I pay. Uh, Two dollars more than I would be paying because I get uh, Netflix with uh, 4K. Yeah. All right. Uh, and um, so, uh, and not all their films are in 4K. I mean, not all their shows. Yeah. But I, but I, I, I get their 4K, and that's why I pay the extra two dollars a month. But it's still 14.99 a month if you don't do that. Did you get a letter from them the other day? No. No. Oh, you should have. You probably would have gotten an email that says your price is going up X number of dollars. I got nothing. Yeah. I yeah. got it. Really? I mean, right yeah. right now at 16.99, I think I'm actually getting HBO cheaper. You know? Yeah. Is yeah. HBO any good? Uh, I don't have HBO and when I lost all my credit cards mm -hmm. and I had to get new ones, yeah. certain uh, certain ones that were billing to different cards uh, I didn't renew. I didn't renew the Showtime. I said, fuck them. You know, there's nothing on there. Showtime, I find, is a kind of a loser. You know, I never yeah. watch Showtime. But Girlfriend, see, Girlfriend comes home, and all she does yeah. is she plops herself down and then starts watching endless, endless uh, um, uh, binge watch shows. Mm. Uh, and uh, she watched a 65-episode was it, was it Czechoslovakian soap opera? Something like yeah. that. I don't know. It was all subtitled. And uh, she watched it. And uh, so she, she, she loves that binge-watching stuff. And yeah. some of it, some of the stuff she watches, I don't understand why. And uh, so, uh, and sometimes, you know, sometimes we're kind of funny in that we don't want to uh, necessarily... Um, oh, there, yes. I, I, how do I, I'm going to have to stop that, those ding dongs from happening on this computer. Uh, well, they won't Skype, I think. They, you can do yeah, it. they won't with the new computer, actually. Let me see here. I got to, I got to put somebody on here. Let me see here. Where do we go? There we go. Ba, 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 it's Mr. Bree. And, uh, yeah, it's Bree, but he doesn't have his, uh, Bree. All we see is a Skype yeah. logo, and we don't want to see a Skype logo, so turn your camera on, will you? Oh, I, I cannot uh, right now, Alex. Why? It's not just oh, there, well, there we go. You, we have a picture on you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but we don't have... Bree, you have to get the Gabnet too. garb. You know, uh, it's not as if you didn't comb your hair. But, you know, <laughs> if, you get, if you get the Gabnet you know, pants and the Gabnet shirt... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you'd be able to get on, and whether you're awake okay. or not. When you, you guys, I have told you this before. When you wake up in the morning, get a mirror. That when you wake up within two or three minutes, 
And you say if you would go on. No way. <laughs> really? But you you shave your head, right? Who? Abri? Uh, sometimes. Oh. Well, uh, uh, so, you know, if you have a shaved head, you don't have to comb your hair. Yeah. By the way, I'm out of, starting to go out of sync now, in case people yeah. are wondering. The more oh, people we get, the more I go out of sync, you know. Oh, more CPU usage. Hmm, why is that? Uh, but I did, I did want to comment on Netflix, because yeah. I am upset that they keep raising their rates. And coming soon, the Disney is pulling their all of their products mm -hmm. from Netflix. So why is Netflix raising their rates when they're going to start losing major content? Because they, want, because they want to make money as fast as possible. They also want to have more money to do original programming. Hmm. So. But they, but there has to be a realization. I, I think maybe that they lose five or ten percent of their customers whenever they raise the rate a certain amount, and and they do it in increments. If you've noticed, because this is happening more and more, so I know that they think, okay, let's not raise it ten dollars. We'll raise it, you know, three dollars three times. But no, I, for me that's worse because I just keep hearing rates going up, rates going up. Yeah. And it should ask you, when you log in, it should say, hey, we're raising the rates. Do you still want to keep your subscription? Of course, they won't do that. Well, they no, do. they're, they they're going to make you opt they, out. They, no, they wrote me. Yeah. They wrote me and sent me a thing, and it said, uh, do you uh, want to, if you want to, you can, you know, you can quit us, but we're raising your rates $2 a month starting in, what was it, May? No, they don't send us that here. Uh, I think you'll get a letter. You should get a letter. I mean, it could be that... I don't know that they do it at a certain point in your subscription. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, because Phil said he didn't get one. No. And uh, Charlie, do you have Netflix? I did. Yeah, I have Netflix. I got the notice. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure when my uh, subscription renews. Yeah. But um, no, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the CBS All Access because I rarely ever look at it. Mm -hmm. I, I rarely ever go to Hulu. Uh, I got that when um, when I went to Sling and uh, uh, Sling TV and uh, Faye wanted to watch Big Bang Theory, but I don't think we've watched Big Bang Theory in two seasons. Well, they do have Star Trek um, uh, Star Trek Discovery, which is a pretty good show, and they have, I won't miss that. and the Twilight Zone, which is a pretty good show now. Yeah, the, the, I watched the uh, Twilight Zone because um, I forgot my login also on the. Uh, on that uh, CBS thing, but I watched the Twilight Zone thing on uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, it was the comedian one. Yeah. And it didn't have the twist that old Twilight Zones had. You know, it it, it was sort of predictable. Well, and I think I think Twilight Zone got a little predictable after a while too. Yeah. By the way, but, what, what I should the Rod do, Sterling it, one. What? Yeah. Rod. My Sterling? dad went to school with Rod Sterling. Sterling. Yeah. Sterling. Sterling yeah. 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 Uh, wow. So anyway, um, so I'm I'm out of sync now, folks. Don't don't even pay attention to me. Just pull, cover that part of your screen. Yeah, um, but uh, not on the Skype. But you guys aren't out know. of sync. I, That's the funny I part. I don't about like it. the uh, the subscription model of Netflix because like sometimes I won't watch it for two weeks straight, and then you know I'll watch a lot for you know a day or two when I have time. I would prefer, you know, micro payments. Mm -hmm. I would like to have it Here's available, you, you know, and then they have a, they make more money. <laughs> the way they do yeah. it now. Yeah, but you if somebody could come up with go. that method, you know, and the other thing, I, I don't like Microsoft. I have my I paid for Microsoft Office like twice, mm -hmm. and now it will just disappear. It disappeared on my computer, and they're trying to get me to sign up for the web based a monthly fee thing and i'm like no i already bought this you know i i really don't like what are you talking really about Mike, microsoft make office more money microsoft three six five yeah at microsoft office a hundred dollars a year mm. and i mean i get it because i gotta get it you know yeah um you know if you buy a uh, word and you know they change it every couple of years it's 500 bucks mm -hmm. and that's all you're getting you know you're right yeah. So, anyway, who knows? At least in the days when you could buy Word. Now I think you have to buy a subscription. Oh, really? You can't get any. Yeah, I don't think you can get uh, individual uh, programs anymore. Really? I know you can't with Adobe. 
uh, either. Yeah, yeah. So, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Well, uh, let's let's. I guess there's a big elephant in the room tonight. Um, oh yeah. You know what I did today? I was uh, I, I I turned on MSNBC and I knew exactly mm-hmm. what I was going to get. Okay, knew exactly what I was going to get. I was going to hear all the things that I want to hear. All right. I I pulled a page out of the Mueller report to protect you. Uh, to make sure that they wouldn't come after you. Yeah. I want you to look at this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I Mueller see. report, Alex. Alex Bennett. Bennett. Alex Bennett, White House, Alex Bennett. Let me see here. I think I can do something here. Wait a minute. I'll keep holding that up there, and we can right. just show it to everybody full screen, because I have a way of, of doing it full screen. Look yeah. at that, folks. Yes. There it is. There it is. <laughs> See, now I protected you. Mm-hmm. I pulled the page. It's no longer in the Mueller report Good. because I I pulled it out of there. I'm glad uh, that you uh, that you did that. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's called collusion. I'm afraid. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, oh boy. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to see what uh, what happens. Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm I'm sitting here trying to deal with this at the same time. I'll be so glad when I get that other machine back, because it could take it, it can really take a licking and keep on ticking. And today I have much more CPU usage than I usually have. It's like a 33, and that's probably what what's slowing itself down. Anyway, so um, I went from station to station, and you know the whole. Uh, what was going on was what, what I call Rashomon. Are you familiar with this Japanese tale of Rashomon? Akira Kurosawa. Yeah, in which someone is killed, and then the various ghosts of people who, who saw the crime taking no, place. No, there's or, only one ghost. There's only one ghost, it, but the rest, the, of, the rest of them are people, and they all have yes. a different version of the story of what happened. And that's exactly what today was, Rashomon. You know, everybody had a different story about what oh. You know what was going on, uh, and, and it really depended on which uh, service you were watching. Yeah, uh, uh, the only one was. that I found that I could rely somewhat on was the BBC, because they had no no stake axe in the game, grind. no axe to grind. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know I couldn't make heads or tails uh, of the whole thing. I, I I don't know. It made no sense to me because everybody was interpreting it differently. You know. Yeah. I go over uh, to Fox, and well, there's no collusion, and there was no, consp- right. you know, there was no uh, um, obstruction of justice. Uh, Trump is getting away with this whole thing now, and everything's going to be wonderful, and it's all wax lips and candy coated candy or whatever. And uh, then you go over to MSNBC, and it's all oh, this is this is this is the end. This is the end of Trump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It- they're just trying to cover up, uh, you know, they've been wrong all of this time with uh, uh, the, you know, you can't believe that William Barr would come out this morning making a statement, uh, and he said that there were 10 items, and these 10 items and were episodes. probably... Episodes, they referred to. Episodes, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it, I believe, and of course I haven't read it, but I believe that these episodes were due to tantrums. Uh, by Trump, no, but this had that... not, no, it had nothing to do with tantrums. By, by well, Trump. He, it was ten episodes in yeah. which he could be, perhaps, considered to be obstruction of justice. Yeah, but uh, I guess he had mentioned that he wanted to do these things, and his counsel told him, "No, you can't do that." Mm-hmm. Now, is that obstruction when you say, "Hey, you know, I, I'd like"? No, to... what obstruction is is when you. Fire your attorney general because you figure he isn't doing what you want him to, and it may come out all bad yeah. for you. That's well, what obstruction. That's what no, obstruction. He fired of, his no, attorney general. Yeah, two. Of, he, he fired two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah for, uh, for, for a pro- Mueller, uh, not Mueller. Uh, uh, Jeff um, Sessions. What's his name? Sessions. Uh, he. Yeah, he Sessions. He fired because he recused himself. And well, shouldn't when, when, he recused himself because he figured it was too close to the Trump campaign. And that he should not be a person who makes a decision in this in this particular case, and he recused himself. And the only thing Trump didn't like about that is that Trump wasn't being loyal; he wasn't kowtowing to him. And uh, but that's uh, th- those are two cases right there of obstruction of justice, where you're trying to impede 
the, uh, the, uh, the wheels of what is going on in trying to do this investigation. Uh, mm. Trump would have just done fine to sit back and not say anything. But yeah, I think that it, I, but I out. think that personally he knew he was guilty of something and he was afraid he was going to get caught with his pants no. down. You know, they'd taken some things out of context when he said he was fucked and, and so forth. And I guess if you listen to the full statement, uh, it was he was talking about that it was going to impact his presidency and it was going to impact his agenda. Uh, so, you know, are these, heard, are these the talking points that you're... You, you, no, no, no. This is actual audio that I heard. Uh, of of or, who? Uh, of, uh, oh, it wasn't of Trump. It was of... Um, uh, oh, it was, yes, it was. It was uh, audio of Trump uh, that uh, they played on one of the stations. I think it was Fox. Hmm. I didn't hear it. Yeah, well, of course not. They wouldn't play that. You were only playing the sound bite. Did they use? The, did was, he use the word "fucked" in the sound bite? Uh, I think they used "effed." No, I think what you saw was a, was a a written transcription of what he supposedly said. Oh, okay. I don't. Yeah, you didn't hear it. You didn't uh, hear it. Well, I didn't read it, so it. it, it you know. Uh, yes, no. Bree. Somebody yeah, said yeah, it. Yes, Bree. Okay, so here we go again. I always have to say, let's take it to the extreme on one side. What's the end result? Okay, yeah, he he's guilty. He did everything they, you know, Democrats want to say. Okay, what do you want to do about it? What what do you, what, what are you saying? I, say that again, Bri. Like you like you. We had this conversation before about his taxes, and you know, and it's like, okay, let's say everything bad is is totally there. What are you going to do about it? Uh, yes, Jeff. Well, from my understanding, uh, is that the people in uh, government can continuously do more and more studies to understand what Trump did illegally. Now, they can't take it to court about these issues until he re he leaves that job. Once he leaves that job, he could take information that they continuously uh, get more information, and then they can take him to court. Name one president, one former president, who has been subjected to that. Not one. Not in this country. No, because once they leave, nobody cares. The politics is over. Yeah. But when they're there, it's all politics. Yeah. You're right. You know, it, if you watch somebody every day, you'll catch them doing something. I mean, if 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 you watch me, uh, there are times when there's this one intersection where the lights are really slow, and some people just walk. They jaywalk because we know what the system is and. It, it's not right. It's not set up correctly. So technically, we're jaywalking, but we know it better than anybody. And so, and then somebody wants to come along and say, "Oh, you're jaywalking." It's like, well, you don't know. I, and I and I know this is a much bigger deal what they're saying. But again, take it to the extreme. You, nothing can be done. You have to vote. And if you vote in, you know, the next election, that's your deal. Mm -hmm. If the Russians haven't. You know, figure it, it, it hack the electronic voting machines already. Yeah. Okay. We have, um, we if have, there's no consequences for doing wrong, people are going to keep doing wrong, and that that's why there's got to be consequences. They have to impeach him, or else the presidents from now on are going to do whatever the fuck they want yeah. because there's no consequences. Looks tonight like well, we we've can't got, even figure out a definition for what's wrong. Looks like we've got a, an ad going here for Skype tonight because we've got a caller now. Is, who, uh, who is this? Hey, this is Jack Bishop. I called about uh, two things. One, to let everybody know I will do a show after the ramble because we didn't get to do that last night. And also, I was I was so excited to hear the great Phil Meyer once again be a PR man for Donald Trump. Uh, that I, I have an announcement that I'm going to make in the next 15 minutes, and uh, I think you'll be surprised. An announcement? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm teasing it. Oh, you're, te uh, you're so teasing it. So in 15 it. minutes, uh, you know, we'll uh, I'll make the announcement. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you right. can, uh, yeah. Well, I will certainly be waiting, but I find interesting about all of this that's come out about the Mueller report today is that already folks on the right are calling for an investigation of the investigators. Of, of Well, of the people that asked for the investigation, like Nadler and uh, a, a number of other ones. Nadler was the one that said, there's definite proof that there was collusion. They have proof. That All right? Nadler, and so? Uh, yeah, it was Nadler and Pelosi was... They, they were, uh, there was collusion, collusion. Uh, well, look, that, that, that was to ramp up the base on the left like they were supposed to do. No, that was, that was fake news. Fake news ramping up the left doesn't matter. That's what they were supposed to do. Now, oddly enough, I've got an announcement to make right now. I am for that investigation. I wanted to start with Barr. And I don't want us to do it. I want it done by someone, or some organization, rather, that has no force in the race. MI5, Desi N Bureau, Royal Mounted Police, who can let the chips and the people fall where they may. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah. 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 So... Well, uh, I, I have a, I have the solution to all of this, and I, I'm going to use uh, GabNet as uh, I'm going to come out on GabNet and uh, say, Wait a minute. I, mean, I am running for president. Vote for Phil. <laughs> I am the write-in candidate. I am going to uh, uh, go in as a Democrat. <laughs> and uh, I am. I, I will put help that, put that uh, sign, the Democrats put, put that secure sign, the White House as long as sign it's up me again. that's in there. There we go. There we go. All right. Yeah. There's, so there's his, yeah, there's this is an exclusive on GabNet. I'm announcing my candidacy for uh, President of the United States. All right. Well, who was the right? Who was the right wing pundit today that said she could see herself uh, not only voting for Bernie Sanders but actually working for him? I, well, I, I well think actually, you know why, you know why I could beat Bernie Sanders? You know, uh, Bernie Sanders is is just some Trotskyite that uh, you know that uh, some some old uh, socialist. Uh, I I'll have no problem beating Bernie Sanders. Matter of fact, I'll kick him first. Mm -hmm. and, well, he gave a pretty good accounting of himself on uh, yeah. Fox the other Are night. Are you kidding? What about when they asked him about the uh, million dollars that he made? And uh, you know, you know. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Are you are you saying that those of us on the left shouldn't make money? Well, not not according to Bernie is Sanders. That what, is that what you're saying? Now, is that but, what you're you know, saying? Millionaires, no. it's it's now no, billionaires it's, it's, or trillionaires. That, you know, that is, that, is, that, is that what you're saying, that those of us on the left should not take advantage of the situation when it comes our way? Are you Absolutely asking not. me? All right, so what are you saying? Uh, Phil, 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 right Phil, 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 let me, let me just try and inform you of something. That just because you're a socialist doesn't mean you have to walk around in sackcloth and ashes, you know. I mean, you can be a socialist and you can be a billionaire, and there are several billionaires that are basically socialists. You know. Well, uh, our, our buddy uh, Bernie, uh, what he, the maximum he'd ever donated was what three percent of his income, and he's normally under two percent uh, as far as his donations. You know, Bernie does not walk the walk. He doesn't talk the talk. Are you asking for some does. sort of political purity? Well, Bernie so, says so it is. Let, let, some litmus test? Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, there should be a litmus test for how, how no, socialist but... he is. Also, Why? I support the Green New Why? Deal. You know, on Why? my platform, on my platform the Green New me. Deal is going right, to be back away. money green. Uh, money green. Uh, you, you give me the money, and, it, and I'll give you the Green New Deal. So right? why are you asking for some sort of political litmus test? Well, because uh, he's never, he, you know, he's a flash in the pan. Now, why are you asking for it? Because he's a flash in the he's pan? He's a flash Barbie. in the pan? He's been around for like he's 50 years. He's been around for 40 years. Give me a break. Yeah. 
This week he's he's a Democrat. <laughs> Last week he was an independent. Uh, you know. Well, how about how, how about uh, that guy that ran as a Demo- Democrat and then switched to the uh, switched to the Republican Party and then Believe became an independent? I can't think of his name. Jefferson, I think. Well, that was Joe Lieberman. Trump. Trump was a Joe Lieberman. Yeah. How about Joe Lieberman? Does he a flashy fan? No, he's retired. How about Donald Trump? He's the president of the United States. I he guess you're Democrat. Except he's going to lose to me. He's going to lose to me. Democrat. He used to be pro-choice. But Phil, yeah. you you have to understand something also about uh, Bernie. You say you know how much he gives. You can get you can give without giving. In other words, if you support certain businesses like Patagonia or Ben and Jerry's, you know uh, that. At, well, at the time, I don't, Ben and Jerry's is now owned by you know Unilever. But historically, when they started out, they had a maximum wage. The CEO wasn't allowed to make more than ten times the lowest what the lowest wage well, earner that's what the in Sony the guy does business. Too. So you can support it that way and. Mm-hmm. There, there are other ways. Did, did everybody see AOC's Intercept, The Future? No. No. Oh, I highly recommend that you watch that. If you go on YouTube, just type in AOC, uh, Future, Story, and then The Intercept. You'll get a chance to watch it, and it's powerful. Uh, just amazing. I hope she did better than uh, she did on that radio interview. With They had that skullduggery thing in the background. And uh, the guy asked her, uh, can you name three things that Trump has done that he'll be prosecuted for? And she couldn't name one. Uh, so, you know, she's, she's, she's a phony, too. Well, hey, if you want to talk about phonies, how about the great Ronald Reagan, who was a Democrat and a union president at one time, until GE came along and made him a deal to make him a wealthy man. Uh, he, when he left the presidency, he was almost broke. Uh, I said it was, a, it was a two million dollar donation from the Japanese. That uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that GE, when he was doing those commercials for General Electric, he made a ton of money. Now how he blew it. And what he blew it on, I don't know. But, it's, you know, that when seems he, pretty when, when, G, to me. when he was doing those GE commercials, there was no Republican Party. It was still the Whigs and the Tories. <laughs> you know? Uh, that would have been funny, except it wasn't funny. <laughs> That's because you don't have uh, you, you don't have a sense of humor. But no, I got a great sense me, of humor. That's Phil, Phil, that just wasn't funny material. Go back and rewrite that. Yeah, you vote for me. That's all I can tell you. you uh, know, we've I, been joined, will... by the way, we've been joined by Ray Renati. Hi, Ray. Hey, Excuse hey, me, hey, I, I, I can't get a word in edgewise, so, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, it's I hard knew there'd be you. some gloating going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's no gloating here. You know, I get just, to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now there is. <laughs> Yeah, there's that stupid fucking hey, Nazi Bill, Nazi symbol. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know I don't think I don't think we know as much as we think we know. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, considering the level of redaction that I've been. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm sick of uh, uh, all the way around, and I said this earlier, and I'll say it again in my uh, uh, non-sync way. If you're watching, I'm out of sync. To tonight um the um um uh, the fact of the matter was i watched msnbc today and then i watched fox and then i watched cnn and they all had a different interpretation based on how they felt about things of what this paper was you know what this Mueller report was all about and i quite frankly i had no handle on what it was about at all yes uh, charlie wants to talk I just just wanted to make a comment on what Phil said earlier. There is nothing in the policies of either Bernie Sanders or AOC that is against people making money. You can make all the money you want sure, but as you long can't as you keep pay it. your own fair share of taxes. Yeah, well, long, you, 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 have no, you have no concept, Phil, of yeah, what you, socialism is. You've never been oh, able yes, to... Oh, yes, def- I do. Uh, it, it's, it's, no, the step to, it's the way that Democrats 
refer to communism. Uh, no, they just call it not. socialism. No, it's socialism not, Phil. And communism are two different things. You don't really believe that, Phil. Yes, I do. Really? I believe that socialists uh, are, I mean, know, are the scourge of the uh, earth. They, yeah. um, okay, okay. If they're, the scourge, if they're the scourge of the, of the earth. We live in a socialist country right now. It's just the de degree of socialism that you're talking about. Yeah. No, we, we live in a republic. And uh, here you're allowed yeah. to. Phil, allowed Phil, to Phil you, were you, you were a fucking cop. Wait a minute. You were a fucking cop. Do you know how cops get paid? Do you know how cops get paid? Wait a minute. You didn't get paid you're because confusing. you were a rent a cop. But uh, do you know how cops get paid? Because it's taken out of the uh, out of your taxes. It is a socialistic uh, program. So is the fire department. Well, there's nothing so that's a hundred percent one way or another. So, you know, so, so you have a municipality. In, you, you, in a couple of year, in a, a year or so, you're going to get Medicare, right? Oh, I'm getting it now. I, well, I just, uh, just you just signed up for it. Oh, well, you signed up like that. June first. June first. I get it. That's socialism. Oh that no, no. Cool. I paid. Hey, Alex. Every, yeah. yeah every, every, hold on a second. Everybody, everybody. Bree wants to say something, and I have to. When I hear him, Alex, I have, I have a, yeah. I have a question about that. If we do Medicare for all, is that going to ruin it for you? I don't think so. If I, you know, get it just like I've always gotten it, um, you know, and this room, you there's, there's, there's room the for it. You know, there's. The, I to begin with, I think we should probably dump about twenty five percent of our military budget. I think we're over military in this country more so than any other country in the world per capita, and and use that money to take care of giving everybody free medical care. Yeah. Uh, just set off another missile. Let, let, let me jump Ray, in here. Ray has his, his hand. Ray has Ray, Ray, Ray has his hand up. I got to defer to him. I just want to make it make it clear. As far as in my opinion, socialism does not uh, preclude being a republic or a democracy. So, you it's just the amount the degree of socialist programs that you have in your country. You can still be a republic or a democracy. Even yeah, I agree. Have a lot of I agree with you, but I, oh. I don't. I don't. I feel that socialism. Uh, you know, look, Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, you work hard. You've got stuff, right? You yeah. work for that stuff. Yeah. Now, if I didn't work for that stuff, why should you give me some of your stuff? Uh, yeah, but you we know? all do that to Nobody some extent. It's just stuff. a matter of degree, right? I mean, we all Nobody pay taxes really to support. Stuff. I mean, we have welfare yeah, we, system. Yeah, I want. I want to. We have, right. you know, we have all these I, things. We have fire department, police. I mean, we're all paying in roads. Right. Just it's because just a we're paying in for those municipal things doesn't necessarily mean that I got to pay in seventy or eighty or ninety percent of what I make. Uh, Why not? Uh, that would be the extreme, right? No, it's not yeah, the Phil. extreme. It's what socialists want. They want yeah, the Phil. government to yeah, make the yeah, decision. Ninety percent. They want everyone to pay seventy to ninety percent. No, of what you're they getting make. caught no, up in no, the future. No, your whole. But, I mean, I just, I just listen to what you said. Look. Hey, Phil, Phil, in the 1950s, in the early 50s to the mid-50s. Mm -hmm. I have, a, I have an answer for that. The top wage earners were paying 80 to 90 percent, and that forced them you to You have blinders on. You have blinders on. I'll tell you why. There was something called deductions. All right. And we can bring those back if we so choose. Well, what Trump is doing is he's making things fair by eliminating the deductions. We shouldn't have any deductions. What we should have is a fair tax rate and forget all of this finagling with this deduction and that deduction. I remember in 1965, my father bought a boat. And the reason he bought a boat was because he could write it off as a second home. That you can't do that the, shit. It was the law then, and he could get away with it. Well, then it now, was the I law. Want, but now, also, I want to back up. I want to back up. Jack, 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 Jack. Don't, yeah. don't shout. Some people are complaining you're too loud. Oh. Okay, well, let me back away. Yeah. Uh, I want to point out something that Bree brought up. The question of would Medicare for All affect you, Alex, me, Phil, anybody that is already eligible and receiving Medicare. If you look at Medicare and you consider what it does, it is an insurance plan that you do pay into even as you go along. 
some of them some of them have uh, policies that pay more. And like any other insurance plan, the more people that participate, the more the cost to everybody drops. That's if they participate. And then the and service they will. gets worse. And also, in this country, we have a lot of unhealthy people. The reason Medicare for All or socialized medicine works in some other countries is that they're healthy. You know, in, in Finland and Sweden, they Sweden, have they have a healthy lifestyle. Uh, they exercise. They, they, they do everything I don't. But, you know, uh, they, they have a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and, how I was long did, this, and, and how long did it take for them to get there? It was it was in their psyche. From, uh, uh, Phil, from to begin with, to begin with, the, the, if what you're mistaking for a healthy lifestyle is you're talking about a lifestyle in which the nourishment is proper, okay? Well, and wait, wait, well, let me finish. And we live in a country where people don't get nourished properly because they can't well, afford to nourish themselves properly, and so they have to eat junk food, things that aren't good for them, and so on. Food. Junk food is more expensive than good food. Oh no, you know, Phil! No, Phil! Hey, no, I had two hey, Big hey, Macs Phil. the other day. It was eleven bucks. Well, then you, 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 a curse on you for even getting a Big Mac. Uh, yeah, I you know, I mean, uh, you, 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 look at you. Don't get Big Macs, okay? Well, I'm going on the keto diet. Ooh, yeah, we'll you're going on the that. keto diet. Let's see how that does for you. Yeah, well, yeah. Because you know what you're going to do? You're going to wind up spending a fortune on the keto diet because it's not a cheap diet. I'm telling you, the low carb that I went on, you got to eat meat, yeah. you got to eat chicken, you got to eat all the things that cost money, okay? And you well, can't I, have all the things that don't cost a lot of money, which has like fructose sugar in it and things like that, right? Processed well, foods. Uh, my biggest problem. Uh, let me let's I, get I back to these countries there. where you yeah. say they have better health. They have better health because they have doctors who they can go see and not have to pay them. Let me finish. Don't give me a no. This is the truth, Phil. Under so socialistic medicine in those countries, people see doctors on a more frequent basis, and the doctors keep them in line. For instance, in England, as an example, the doctors there are given a bonus for keeping their people healthy and are penalized if the people get too sick. In other words, there is an incentive for them to make sure people are on good diets and so on and so forth. Uh, we Let me go back somebody. to the Sweden yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I watched the You didn't listen to a word I said, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, but you didn't uh, care I'm, because disagree. it doesn't fit into your mo method well, and your mode of operation. No, that's just because you're trying to control the dialogue. What, what do you mean? Uh, I've been keeping my mouth shut for the last 15 minutes because all of you guys have it, been talking. Well, okay. I watched this documentary on Sweden that they were... Uh, uh, saying that they were integrating uh, a lot of uh, immigrant immigrants in, into Sweden, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one of the things they were talking about was how the immigrants started to participate in exercise programs and and uh, and, and healthier lifestyles, and this is what they do in that country. You know, in uh, in Japan, people get together when they first go to work in the morning. They exercise. They do calisthenics. Uh, yeah, they it, have it, a it, song on the radio. Of living than we have here, huh? And we can do the huh? same thing in this country if we We can, it. but we don't. We don't, if Jack. We, if we We, we don't it. because we people can't the, afford it. Look, hold on a second, Jack. The fact Watch is... That video. W w it, the fact is that people cannot afford in this country to go on what we would consider a good diet. A good diet is That's expensive. True. Secondly, doctors here just try to take care of what's wrong with you. They don't try to keep look in the future and say, here's what you got to do and, and put you on a plan. And it's a whole different way of looking at medicine in those other countries because it isn't something in which people do it for profit. You know, every morning I pass this guy, uh, that, or many people that stand on the corner of the freeway, mm -hmm. and they're and they're asking for money, and they're going, they're having you know bad food diets, McDonald's, that kind of yeah. thing, but they all have cigarettes hanging out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. So if they can afford a pack of cigarettes, yeah, they okay. can afford a decent diet. You know, listening to you, I had a tooth pulled the other day, Phil, and it was easier than listening to you right now. Uh, yes, Ray, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I, I've spent a lot of time in, in France, and I can tell you absolutely Alex is right. The healthy food in the grocery store 
it is not nearly as expensive as it is here. Um, Why and, do you think that is? You pay it, a premium for some, fresh. I, I don't. I do not know. I do not know. I just know that it's affordable to everybody, and people eat healthfully, and they have socialized medicine, and they have a great medical. Uh, I have a theory on this. Yes, it's awesome. Yes, Bree. What's your theory? Um, when I lived in Germany, uh, and I stayed with a friend of mine, she would ask us in the morning what we wanted to have for dinner, and she would go out and get the ingredients, and everything was sort of closer, and and electricity was more expensive, so they had smaller refrigerators. In the states, we have to drive very far, and most people have huge freezers and refrigerators, so they will buy things. They have a longer shelf life, and most of it, if you look at our supermarkets, like 90% of it, you could qualify that as not even being real food. And like only the produce section and the that is like real food. And in Europe and in where I live and in Asia, the live food, the fresh food, is usually larger than the foods that you would stock. But in the States, we just love to stock the food. We want you know, all this canned food and all the stuff that we can keep. So I don't know why, but it's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. But all I'm saying is, is that in countries where, in this country, to be a doctor is to write, at least it used to be, it used to be that you wrote yourself a nice big fat check for the rest of your life, okay? Um, the fact of the matter is that in other countries, being a doctor isn't a money-making profession. It's something you do because you call you consider it a calling. And yes, you can make decent money. In Britain, the average doctor starts at $200,000 a year paid by the government. And that increases with the health of the people who he has under him. And uh, so the more healthy your clients are, your people are, your patients are, uh, uh, the more money you make. So I don't think that's a bad deal at all. And everybody, you just go into a doctor and you don't get a bill. He, and he cares about you and he wants to have you be well because that makes him a little bit more money. So, I mean, here in this country, doctors, uh, uh, you know, I, I went to a thing for my doctor. Excuse me, folks, if I'm out of sync, but just cover that part of your screen up. Um, the, the fact was that I went to a thing for my doctor where he was going to try and push a thing called concierge service. And what yeah. this was, was that if you paid him $2,500 a year, he'd actually make a house call, you know, and that he, if you needed him tomorrow, they'd fit you in. Well, wait a minute, but I don't pay the $2,500, and if I'm dying, you're going to wait a couple of days before you come see me? But anyway, when I went to this thing, there were like about 500 people there because they had invited them you know, to come, come and have wine and everything like that to explain this service. And I said, boy, he's got a lot of patients. I said, oh, this is just, this is just the, the ones that showed up. I said, how many patients does he have? He says, about 3,000. Well, how many doctors are in the office? Just he him. See, he this is his can't practice. Can't see them all. His practice. Oh, yes, he can. Over a given year, of course he can. Well, let, let's say this. Let's say he works... 300 days a year, uh, you know, that's a, what's that, 100, uh, 300, uh, that's a th uh, 10 people a day. Well, you know, uh, uh, some of them won't, don't come to them all the time. All I'm saying is, is that it's kind of like an assembly line at doctor's offices now. And um, uh, I, I, don't, I don't, that's not necessarily a very, a very good thing, um, that you're part of an assembly line. Uh, well, he collects the twenty five hundred dollars for all of those people, and then he just goes on vacation. So you know, uh, yeah, something like that. That's well, not the work. And, and, you know, the other thing yeah. is when I'm back in the states, the thing that is overwhelming that I see is ads for prescription drugs. You know, in mm -hmm. Singapore and in Dubai, I I can go through an entire year without seeing an ad. I might see one ad, you know, in the in the pharmacy as a poster but in the states it's impossible to avoid because and then they hire the hot reps that go in to tell the doctors yeah. to push a certain yep. drug and yeah i i read a really strange story the other day and it was very sad if it's true but 
a dentist was pushing a special toothpaste on uh, a family, and the girl used it, but she was allergic to milk. And for some reason, there was some type of milk in the toothpaste, and she had an allergic reaction and died. And, you know, it, I just thought that was crazy, but uh, she sent out the word that, you know, if you have kids with allergies, you can't take anything for granted. You have to check every single thing uh, to make sure that it's not going to have the, you know, the allergic reaction, which is another Marie, thing. Did she know that she was allergic to milk? Yeah. And they didn't, is, don't they label these things if it's got, you know, milk products in it? Apparently they do. I mean, who would think that toothpaste has milk in it? I'll tell you, I feel, I do feel sorry for doctors today because they are not making the money they once did. And the reason is not Medicare. In fact, most doctors will tell you they like Medicare better than they like the insurance companies. Because Medicare, if you treat somebody under Medicare, Within three weeks, they say they get a check. With uh, the uh, insurance companies, cents. no, but with the insurance companies, it's for six cents, and it's six months later. Okay, yeah. so uh, you know um, uh, the insurance companies are the ones who are are making it really rough for these doctors, and so I do feel sorry for them. It isn't the land office business it once was. I'll tell you who is making money. If you're going to be anything today, be a fucking dentist. Because there is no yeah. Medicare, and there's no mm -hmm. the, the insurance I have is only twenty it pays back twenty five hundred dollars a year, and uh, they don't have to go collect from that insurance company. That insurance company sends me a check to make up for the check I wrote to the to the dentist. So dentists still have a pretty good business going for them, but doctors have had to, had to join HMOs. Um, I I can't tell you how many of my personal doctors who were affiliated with Mount Sinai now work for Mount Sinai. You know, in fact, I passed. Uh, we got on the bus at Marjorie's office, and we uh, we kind of you know go through and uh, 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 Marjorie's it, it, office, and we take a bus home, and we pass by Mount Sinai every time we do. And I I say to her, uh, uh, Hey, dear, uh, you know that's where we're going to die. <laughs> it's <laughs> part of. Is part of the reason they're starting to work for those uh, hospitals and, and so forth because of the high cost of uh, malpractice insurance? No, it's the high and cost the of the litigious no. society. Oh, it's, that a, we have? It, it's the high cost of of doing business, of keeping an office going. Do you know that if you go to any doctor's office, go see the room where the people who take care of billing are? There may be oh, five yeah. people in an average office who have only that job dealing with the insurance companies. Forget Medicare. Medicare's cut and dry. You send, you send them the bill, they pay it off. Okay, for whatever less than usual, they pay it off. But, Unless the but having the bill, it, it hap, it, it's, it's not that it's pretty. They've got it down. They know how to do the coding and all of that, Phil. I mean, you're trying to make an exception on this thing. The fact is... That that's a large part of keeping keeping the business going are these people who do all the uh, all the dealing with the insurance companies and the sending out of stuff to the insurance companies, so uh, that's the cost of having an office. So why don't you go to work for Mount Sinai? They'll pay you a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, and uh, you'll uh, you won't have to worry about keeping a business going. You know, after another, another thing, another thing that uh, the insurance companies don't want you to know. It is, uh, and I didn't know this until I got to talking to a guy uh, who was a doctor who became a good friend of mine, is the insurance companies don't want your primary care guy spending more than 10 minutes yep. on any patient. They want to shoot you in and get you out so he can see the maximum number of people in a six to eight hour day. Well, eventually, you're going to see rob uh, artificial intelligence doctors. You have to go through two screenings with them before you get to an actual human doctor. I've found that uh, using Kaiser, I'm, the way they communicate, I'm able to take a picture or something. I had uh, a bruise on the bottom of my foot. Oh, by the way, you know, you know, it's so, you, you know what Kaiser once used to be referred to as. Yeah, yeah, bubbles. Uh, no, social, no, socialized medicine. Well, it was it, no, it, it self-insured. It absolutely was socialized medicine. Henry Kaiser basically, basically Kaiser did it for his employees, right. and then he extended it to other unions. 
okay? So my father was a member of the Musicians' Union, and he felt very privileged that he could get Kaiser, and it was very cheap, one small price, and you had the system you've got now. Right. Uh, well, it, I'm it, happy you're, with Kaiser. But you, yeah, you're very happy at Kaiser, and it, it came out of socialized medicine. Right. Well, I'm sure I'm paying and it just still as is. much as it I, still I is, but Anthem or any of those. It still is, but it's more expensive than it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I, I took I had Faye take a picture of the bottom of my foot, and I emailed that picture through their system, and the guy says, "Oh, it's it's not neuropathy, and it's not you know anything with diabetes. It's just a bruise." And sure enough, a couple of days later, it went away. So, um, yeah, it's 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 a pretty good system, and they can refer you uh, to all sorts of different things. Uh, you know, if they had a system like that, and people paid in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, Jeff, I, I like Jeff, that. let me, uh, Jeff, can you hear me, Jeff? Jeff? Or is he Jeff, asleep? Is, he, is Jeff asleep? Yeah. Is he really? Yeah, it's, it's late. Jeff, oh, can you hear me? Oh, no, he's not. Yeah. No. Anyway, mm -hmm. Jeff, uh, it, it, uh, what about, uh, we're talking about medicine. This is kind of your bailiwick. Yeah, well, you know, I go to the university, and they're really well organized. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very happy about it. And and they take your Medicare and everything like that. And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? Because you're the other one in this in this group. What do you do for a secondary insurance? Jeff. Jeff. No. Huh? Well, I must have something that my wife is. Well, okay. But I mean, well, you have today. to have a secondary insurance. Yeah, I know, but yeah. I don't know how much it is. Well, but going we, through this yesterday or two days ago with Kaiser. Mm -hmm. I had to make some choices, and uh, they they have something called silver something, and there's only one thing available, and for twenty bucks more a month, I get a gym membership, uh, I get a um, dental and um, eye eyeglasses and uh, so forth, and you know you get like two hundred and fifty or two hundred and eighty dollars worth of eyeglasses a year. So, you know, I figure twenty dollars a month is how much, how, much you, bucks. how much do you get for dental insurance? Uh it's Delta Dental. Yeah, that's what I have. And uh but I asked them, is are there different levels? And they said, No, this is the only one they offer. And it's fifteen so, you get fifteen hundred bucks a year they'll pay back, right? Yeah, but it's it's costing me twenty bucks a month. Yeah. But I so, I, I in my plan with SAG after my su yeah. supplemental plan. Uh, we pay something like $500, uh, let's see here, we pay $500 a quarter for the two of us. That's for the both of you. For the both of us. And, uh, and we get $2,500 a year for the dental. It's a mm. really good plan. Yeah. You know. uh, uh, do they pay for implants or a portion of it? Yes, they will. Uh, they didn't used to, but they do now. I have a list of the things they handle. They'll even, if you want gas, they'll pay for the gas. Now, well, the funny thing won't. is, what you should do is get the implant in December, and then in January get the other part of the implant. <laughs> so, you know, so you can take your five grand. Well, no, no. What there. happens is they pay a percentage. Okay, so yeah. the, the implant they'll pay fifty percent. So maybe I'll owe twenty five hundred dollars, but they yeah. might pay more for the. With, for instance, the extraction of my tooth was seventy five percent. You know, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, of course, now I don't have a tooth, so I actually lost something rather than gained something. But, uh, yeah. you know, what, what could have been a very expensive proposition for me between the tooth and the clipper and so on, it's probably mm -hmm. going to run me somewhere in the neighborhood of $400, $500. Well, you know, Ray, who, you know, understands uh, voices, do you think that Alex's voice has changed at all since he had his tooth pulled? And doesn't he sound like Lou Ferrigno? No. <laughs> we finally, by the way, we finally have a picture on Bree. We finally have a picture on Bree. It's sounding different to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, no one's asked you, how's your play coming along? Oh, it's it's great. We are selling, almost selling out every night. Just one more weekend. Oh, really? Now, yeah. uh, have you learned all your songs? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> well, why don't you just give us a couple of bars from your uh uh, you know your uh, your your best. Uh, my big song, uh, my big yeah. my big solo. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no more carefree laughter. 
Silence ever after. There you go. Oh, that's terrific. Pretty Walking good. through that's an empty house, tears in my eyes. How much do you want? I, I'm, don't do more than 32 bars, otherwise I have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Very good. That's, yeah. well, that's well, that, the chorus. You'll know, you'll know the chorus. What well, is the chorus? The chorus yeah. is knowing. <clears throat> Knowing me, knowing you, uh huh. There's nothing. <laughs> so no one's saying uh huh on our show. I think I might do it on my own tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last time you uh, you did it was the first night of your rehearsals, and you were walking down the street, and you try to sing. Uh, I, uh, oh yeah, and I didn't know the, no. the music yet. That was awful. <laughs> right. you know? so, yeah. <laughs> Quite an improvement. Like twice or something. Now, let me ask Bree. Yeah, in, 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 in Dubai, Bree, uh, frame your, if you can, frame your face a little more in the center there so that we can, yeah, there we go. Uh, uh, what do you do? I may have asked you this before, but since we're on the topic, what do you do for insurance? Um, it's through my company, mm -hmm. and uh, we have three levels. Uh, it used to be ABC. Now it's a, B plus, and B, <laughs> and uh, I have B, mm -hmm. which is sort of the lowest of the low. I can't go to the American Hospital thing. Well, it's named American Hospital, uh, but uh, I've never had a problem. Anytime I have a copay uh, to go and see a doctor, it's uh, it varies between it's like ten or fifteen dollars. Yeah, and meds here are dirt cheap. Now you say this is through your company. You 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 work at a university, don't you, or a college? Right. Yeah. So it's through a university. Yeah. Yeah. Now Bree had some dental work but done. But they don't. No, but they don't view it like that, Alex. Um, business is business, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's not like they have nonprofits and stuff. They don't know really that term. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm sure you know, Bree, that every, I'm sure that everybody. I've was, even gone yeah. to uh, hospitals in China uh, before. Um, I've, I've gone all over everywhere and only in the States is it a big hassle and you I, I read there was a Canadian family that was driving from Florida back to Canada and mm -hmm. the grandfather died and they didn't even take him to a hospital he was having a heart attack because they thought it would be too expensive so they just kept driving back to Canada did you hear that story? Well, he was dead. How, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't have done him any good. Yeah, but uh, yes, I mean, yes, that, that's how. That's the level of how people dislike the U.S. system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, Ray, well, Ray. Alex, you're getting an implant, a tooth implant. No. Oh, oh, you're not. Oh, okay. No, the reason I'm not is that it's it's terribly expensive. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I, even though my insurance will take care of part of it, it's terribly expensive. And, you know, at my age, I mean, how long am I going to be able to use that tooth? Okay? Maybe, yeah, it, could, maybe yeah. it could be the next 70, in the next 20 years, or it could be right. the next 20 weeks. You know? Yeah. So I'm not Can't doing anything. Can't take it with you. Uh, yeah, I not, have two. These two. My two front teeth well, if are it were, implant. If it were a front tooth, I would yeah. do something about it. You got those for Christmas? It's all the way yeah, back. I got <laughs> punched in the face yeah. when, I, when I was a kid, yeah. and they finally, the teeth just yeah. died all the completely. All the way back here. You don't see it, and I'm going to get yeah. a clipper. They call a clipper and put it in there. You won't even notice that I have don't have a tooth there. Oh yeah, one of those little clipper yeah. things. But you don't. You uh, know, I've been talking all night, and I don't think any of you have seen it. You know. No, it's not worth it if it's way back there. Everybody I know has lost that tooth. Usually, don't get it taken care of. No, nah, I. Because it's all the way in the back. You know. Nah, it's, it's not worth it because it's like five grand at least. Oh yeah, well, I. You know, I was telling Bubbles, it comes out to, oh, I figured 5800 bucks, 5300 bucks, something like that, you know. I know, that's why I had to pay, I had to pay, it cost me like $9,000 to get these two. Yeah. Or more. I know, and, I've gone online. I know people go to Mexico and get it done. I've gone online mm -hmm. and I've seen where you can get uh, 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 implants really cheap. And I go... I wonder what the payoff is here. You know, what the trade-off is now, here. Now, Bree, Bree had gotten some dental work done at a discount and uh, had a little bit of a horror story, uh, didn't you? Well, I, I don't know if it's a horror story. Well, we story. determined Bree's afraid of dentistry. 
<laughs> no, I just I found I realized that I could fly to Dubai and it's and have saved like fifty percent or more on my two implants and had my implants put in there. Yeah. Oh really? well, yeah. For me, they tell me go to India and it will be yeah. it will be cheaper than Dubai. But I mean, there are there are parts of Dubai. All you have to do is what I do is I usually ask the um, the Filipinos who work in the food service industry or in the clothes, you know, they sell clothing at the clothing stores. I ask them, I just do a survey of all of them. Where do you go? And then you can find out where the, you know, the, they're good places, but cheaper. I go to Uncle Impong. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Some of my stepkids that live here in the Dallas Ford Worth area, they travel to Mexico. Yeah, for definitely. Their dental work. Yeah. And I worked with a guy who had a business in the Philippines. And because he had dual citizenship, uh, he would fly back to the Philippines for any kind of medical procedure. Because he said, it's, you know, and and he's, and this this was a guy who was an American citizen, Mm -hmm. wasn't Filipino. Right. White boys, we black folks say. And he'd go home to the Philippines to get his work done there. Well, most of their doctors get trained in the U.S. anyway. So. Yeah. you got to just make sure they're not selling your organs. You know? There was once a, uh, I don't know if anybody watched Desperate Housewives, but years ago they made a joke uh, in the script where it said, you know, she was, she was Ava Longoria or whatever was at the doctor. She said, where are you? I don't want to go to a doctor who got there, you know, was from the Philippines or mm-hmm. something like that. And uh, that was a big thing in the Philippines. And, every, and they they canceled Desperate Housewives, and you can't ever watch it in the Philippines now because they made this. Uh, you know, you know, it's interesting tonight. I'm sure everybody tuned in to hear uh, us talk about uh, uh, the Mueller report. And we've done very little discussion of the Mueller report. I mean, we, we did a cursory thing, and, and Phil said what we fully expect him to say, and then that was it. it yeah, but I, it's true. You know, you get so much conflicting information on the different networks, you don't know what's true and what's not. Well, it's, you know? no, it, it's, all, it's all a Rorschach test. It's all Rashomon. It, it's all Polysemic. open. Huh? Polysemic. Everybody looks at it and sees something different. It's like uh, what was that? Was that old game we used to play? The I Ching. You oh, would throw, the telephone. You would throw the I Ching, and then you would look up this thing, and it would say, "The sun rises at dawn." And then you would try to figure out what that meant as your fortune. You know, this is like the I Ching. It's like I couldn't watch any network and get a complete idea of what this was all about. Everybody had their own interpretation, and a lot of it was based on what wasn't said, you know, yeah. but what was implied. Yeah. You know, yes, Jeff. I was listening to this uh, lady who's on uh, MSNBC mm-hmm. at 9 o'clock tonight. Yeah. Um, I can't remember her name. But... Uh, Normally, I can't stand listening to her, but what she was doing is she was just reading it. The Mueller report? Yeah. And you know what? I found that to be very informative. It's well written. It's it's easy. It's I wouldn't say it's easy to understand, but it's not that bad. And, you know, you don't have to have a yeah, but I, it, it's also three. it's also three hundred pages long. Well, I know, but she was four eighty. They said she was not reading it fast. She was reading it slow. You know, and it, yeah. and you know, obviously, uh, 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 to, to show you, you uh, to, to go sh- over the whole to, thing. to show you but how I'm starting to learn some of it. To show you how non-tech uh, these people are, uh, it was delivered today to the Congress. On CDs, yeah, okay, but and they couldn't, Jeff, they, they couldn't you find. This. Wait, let me finish, Phil. Oh, all right, well, I got why don't you finish it for me? What was I going to okay, say? They, Phil? they delivered it on CDs, yes, and, and somebody said that they had to get a computer that could read C- the CD. Yeah, because they didn't have one that. So what they should have done was send it out as PDF files. 
on a on a on a uh, thumb drive, or just download it off the internet. Yeah, you know. But no, they had to go the hard way on this deal. You know, so who knows what that was. Uh, Jeff I'm reading didn't it see on the this. CNN website right now. I saw that. Oh, you did. <laughs> I was okay. Yeah. CNN. I will have uh, I dinner was on Monday with one of their anchors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is so much redaction in this thing. I'm looking at it, man. Yeah, there's well, massive. Did, did they, they, there are some out. sites, Ray, that show yeah. more redaction than there really is. Uh, uh, you know uh, that. You know they take it and then they're redacting a, a ton of other stuff that yeah. wasn't redacted by the government. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, oh. you can't believe anything that you see anymore. Huh. Yeah, wow. but I mean, you knew, I just knew when this came out that everybody, you could go to Fox and I knew exactly how Fox was going to look at it. And then I, you know, I, I went over to Fox and they had Rudy Giuliani there. Oh, well, okay, big whoop. We know that immediately. Bring the crook in. Okay, now we go over to MSNBC and they're going, oh, and you know, what they really meant here and what he really meant here was, and then you go over to CNN and it's a slightly different story. And then you go to Newsmax and, uh, you know, uh, the president's been completely exonerated of everything, including uh, uh, having fucked that porn star. Yeah. <laughs> Bree's got his hand yes, up. Bree. Uh, well, I, I haven't formulated this and it's early in the morning, so don't, don't uh, judge me too harshly. Mm -hmm. But... In the academic literature, we, um, I mean, we have an empirical method, you know, we try to get to, we try to get closer to the truth. We never say that we get to the truth, although in natural sciences we do, like we, we believe and we know, we accept that the earth revolves around the sun, but you, everyone here, we don't know that, you know, we, I could, you know, flat earth society, right? So. So the thing is, is that it seems like we only can understand things if we apply the scientific method mm -hmm. empirically, and then we have to wait over time in order to, what we do is we do meta-analyses. So mm -hmm. we, we, we look at it and we say, well, you know, climate change, 97% of the studies say it's man-caused, but 3% yeah. say it's not. You know, but if you go back in time, those those numbers were very low, and and they could have been at you know this at some, and then over time it kind of goes like this. So, how can we? So when you describe this, everybody has an opinion, and we can say it on here. Phil can say what he thinks and what he believes, and I can say what I think and I believe. We don't, but we don't come to any kind of a conclusion. We just we have fun discussing it, but there's no way that we can empirically prove it. So this is what goes on with with the news uh, media. They they have a target audience that they're selling to. So you like or you like Pepsi, you like Coke. Okay, I'll give you Pepsi. You know, I'll give you Coke. And it's neither is really good for us. But this is the system we have, and I don't know if we can change it. Well, I don't know about you. Hey, me, uh, yes, yes. Let me just yes, here because I got to get out of here. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you want to continue this conversation, glad to have you guys on the intersection. But I think the thing that we have to look at is is this. There is a difference between news and commentary. Learn how to identify the differences. It's and all as commentary. My grandpa, huh? I believe that our news is all commentary. Not, no, no, no. We don't have well, I, I, I think you can. Well, you're wrong about that. But you can take the attitude. They don't vet it. You can take the attitude. Well, oh, yes, gonna, they do. Well, I'm not going to go down that road. with you call me and we'll talk about it. Uh I think you have to take the attitude that is a classic American attitude, and that is believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I can't even believe that anymore. I saw a video of Obama doing something, and it was totally phony. You know, uh, they, they have some sort of... Uh, uh, way no, of, they, what they uh, did is they did that, Phil, as an example of what could be done. It wasn't done to make Obama look a certain well, way. Well, this one, no, they, but it no, was they, spread they, around no, the Internet. They, I, Phil, it was an example of what could be done with today's technology. Yeah, but there are Actually, other things. They're they, doing it with porno and, and, you know, putting people... I saw Trump saying sweet dreams of this. It wasn't very convincing. No, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Ray will do it next. <laughs> hey, see you guys at the top of the hour. Okay, Bye. okay, Jack. Bye, Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. And if he votes for me, I'll set him free. Uh, yeah. What? If he votes for you, you'll set him free. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, let me see uh, here. You know, Ray, I declared my candidacy for uh, president's uh, the, the, uh, presidential election uh, yeah. I, on GabNet tonight, oh. and um, I am the write-in candidate, and I'm going to run as a Democrat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, don't know, I don't believe that. But yeah. My well. prediction is that if it's not Bernie Sanders, Trump wins again. Yeah. Well, Even if it is. I, I think I don't think Bernie can beat him. I don't. I don't. No. Think, you know. I don't think Bernie. I think can we're going to get that. I think that uh, 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 what's his name, Pete. Uh, mm. uh, uh, he's he's thirty-seven years old. Who, who cares? Who cares? The ageist. The ageist. And uh, you know. Who it, cares? Do you think that the Midwest is going to vote for a gay guy? They voted. They, yes, they will. Yes, they and, will. And uh, you know, Bernie is an old Bolshevik. You know uh, that um, I'm telling you now that Mayor Pete would be the best candidate against Trump because uh, Trump uh, can't, can't Trump can't assail him. There's nothing you know who I kind of like. I mean, the guy's uh, been two, two terms two terms in uh, in in Afghanistan, a Rhodes Scholar uh, from what Yale or Harvard? I can't remember oh. which one. Uh, he, he, well, Andrew well, Yang, uh, his uh, his yeah, uh, never, open house. Never heard of him. Oh, uh, he's, he's uh, wrong. He, but he was at town, town hall. Yeah, he was very was good. good. Yeah, well, if you liked him, then he probably sucks. Uh, well, anyway, he's a Democrat, but he's actually. Uh, he, but what he, I'm he saying is, a smart guy. And now I'm in sync. Look at this. Uh, 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 I, I, what I'm saying is that. Uh, uh, what am I saying? Uh, that you were uh, saying no, that uh, I that think the, that the Budacek, the mayor, Budacek or Booty Call or whatever his name because is. Because he was a war hero. Yeah, I think I, I I think he won't be able to sail him because he's gay because that would be going down a path that doesn't yeah, give you doesn't, a, yeah, yeah. And, and there's very little he can can say about this guy and this guy has it all over him. I mean, he was in the military. He you know, it speaks nine languages uh, or seven languages or something like that. Very impressive. I know you're yeah, going no Bree, but I think that he's a stealth candidate like I said Obama was a stealth candidate. And everybody said Obama couldn't possibly win. He's black. You know. What about uh, Howard Schultz? You don't hear from him anymore. Uh, but that's because the, uh, he's too high on coffee. I don't know. I, you know, I mean there will be there will be a, I'll also make another prediction. There's there's going to be a woman in the mix. So uh, it, the Democrat has to, in my opinion, pick a female vice presidential candidate. Well, you know, they're saying that the Democrats are going too far to the left and that they need a more of a centrist. And that's what they're talking about, well, Joe Biden. Well, but but Howard Schultz is more of a centrist. But bo no, bo Howard Schultz is uh, uh, Mayor Pete. That. Mayor He's Pete is a centrist. He's worse than Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's a centrist, Alan? Mayor Pete. You Buda. think so? Buda, no, I thought he Buda was gag, part of the Buda left. Gag, booty call. Booty call. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I, um, okay. I like Tulsi Gabbard, but uh, only because of the discussion that she brings to the mix. I don't think that she could win. She I, had I think a, it has to be Bernie. She, Tulsi Gabbard was on TV this morning, and she was uh, she had sort of changed her tune on Trump mm -hmm. uh, after the, uh, uh, the Mueller thing, uh, and you know I, she was a little bit more impressive when she wasn't yelling about collusion, and. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you hear that, don't you? That's a yeah. cough. That's a cough I have. All of a sudden, I'm in sync now that the show's almost over. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to figure out what does it, but I can't. I can't figure. It has something to do with Skype, but it eats up a lot of power. Believe it or not, more so than the old Skype did. Anyway, hey, listen, guys. Good having you here. Uh, we got Charlie Wallace, and we got Breeze in Dubai, and we got Phil, and then we got a blank space there that was. Uh, 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 Jack Jack Bishop I keep thinking by the name I know him on oh good look uh, you, you look like you're you should get the, the word press in that hat either that or go climb a mountain in Switzerland uh, and also thank you to Jeff and thank you to Ray and uh, uh, you know it would be um, I think um, very nice if you would all kind of uh, wave goodbye to the people out there okay alrighty there they go folks that's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me hang up on them, because then I'll go completely in sync, and everything will be fine. Anyway, that's our uh, that's our our group for tonight, uh, and uh, we'll be back again uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Although I I really don't want to do it until I get my new machine back, but you know 
this, this worked out okay. This worked out all right for us. Anyway, I'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, uh, same time, same station in life. Uh, uh, 9.30, it's Damien Chaplin and the Exchange, and then I'll be on at 10. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>